so immediately as i decided to shoot this part it started to rain which just goes to show how shit my luck is anyway so this week something very interesting happened at the studio i got my hands on the xp pen 24 which is a 24 inch uh, pen monitor and this thing is huge it's much bigger than i expected it to be this means that i had no choice but to rearrange and redesign my current studio space and i decided it would be a good opportunity to show you guys um, how my studio looks right now and how it has been progressing over the last year mark so i did my research and 8,000 tons of explosives are buried in the bunkers. But on the surface, everything seems copacetic. I love you. So let's take a tour of my current starving artist setup. The newest and biggest addition to my studio is the XP Pen 24. I bought this a couple of weeks ago and it has been a great asset. So for the past year, ever since I got the desk, I have been using a UG tablet as well as a television screen as my monitor, which had horrible colors and would hurt my eyes if I stared at it for too long. The pen monitor comes with two styluses and a bunch of replacement nibs I never use. This is a microphone stand and on it is a Behringer C1, one of the cheaper mics you can get and one of the better ones in this price range. It's great for when you have to talk to clients or for when you are recording voiceovers like this one. And the microphone is connected to a Behringer UMC204 interface. To record, I'm using the Canon 700D. Upgraded from the Canon 1300D, this gave me the ability to see myself when I was filming because it has a tilty swivel screen and also it has an audio jack, something that the 1300D lacked, which was a crime in my opinion, because you couldn't connect any microphone to the camera. And speaking of microphones, I'm currently using the Rode VideoMic Go. It's quite old and I don't even know if they make this anymore, but the Video Micro is what people use these days. My twin sister and I also decided to jointly purchase a studio light. The two go studio lights on our budget is the Godox SL60. But I found that for about 20 euros more, we could get the Jinbei EF260, which seems to be pretty much exactly like the Godox, but with the ability to use batteries in case we want to take it outside. Lights are great for artists because of the control you have and the ability to take lighting reference for your illustrations. Unfortunately, I do not have a decent stand to put the lights on, so I'm using one of my old light stands, which is very flimsy and broken, so I have to be very careful so that the very expensive light we just bought doesn't fall off and break. The other filming accessories I have are the newer 2-in-1 carbon fiber tripod and two camera lenses, the Canon EF 50mm 1.8 and the Canon EFS 10 to 18 millimeters. This is a Razer Tartarus version one, and it's currently replacing my old Razer Nostromo. In my honest opinion, this gaming keypad sucks. The version two is much better, but it's also much more expensive. It's an upgrade I will be doing in the future, so for now this has to suffice. was an illustration I did for Halloween and as a way to test the new pen monitor. I decided to go for a darker painting with a more desaturated palette. The creature behind the main character is called a Zangbeto, a West African spirit of the night who patrols the streets and attempts to catch thieves and the like and bring them to justice. I decided to make it look very deformed by giving it different sized limbs. It was such a joy to paint on such a big screen, although it took a bit of getting used to. The painting was quite the challenge, but I like how it turned out. 
My last couple of paintings have been quite dark in theme and I do miss the more vibrant and colorful image I am known for and I would like to find the time to figure out how to combine the two styles. This painting has a lot of little details that I added as a treat for observant 7 viewers. And if you want to see a high res version of the illustration, you can find it over at my Patreon. I will also be selling limited edition prints over at my website. And I think I'll also be doing a giveaway on my Instagram and Twitter just to say thank you to all the new followers I've been getting. I have been kind of split on how I should approach my styles uh, because this is a bit more darker and desaturated than my usual stuff. And I mean, there's no one saying that I can do both. It's just, I got a lot of following last year from people who expect a much more brighter illustration than the one I'm currently doing. And uh, I feel like I'm kind of like letting them down anytime I, I do an illustration that isn't exactly what they they want. I mean, because when you follow someone, you tend to expect they would maintain a similar uh, style and structure for their illustrations, which is not something that I have been doing for a while now. You know, I like to switch things up and I like to do very different things. Uh, hopefully people like this. and. If not, you know, I, I think for my last illustration, it's going to be a lot more brighter. It depends on the month or the week. I tend to paint how I'm feeling at the moment. So this is just how I was feeling. Besides, a much brighter painting wouldn't work for this uh, theme and story. So it had to be like this. Anyway, so this was a crazy week. And the thing is, it might actually get crazier because, uh, believe it or not, I might, if I play my cards right, might get a chance to do an art uh, show in Barcelona, which is incredible because I have never been to Barcelona and I do know a lot of artists and people who live there and this will be a great opportunity to finally meet them in person. I'm going to try my hardest to, to make it and if I do, I'll be sure to bring you guys along and, and film my journey, so that will be a fun thing to do. And uh, that's going to be early next month. So I'll be finding out very soon. So thank you guys for watching and I'll see you guys next time. Bye.